All right, I'm gonna do a real fast video for you guys. Uh, what we're dealing with here is a is a faulty upstream O2 sensor, and and what we're doing is we're we're proving that. And uh, some questions we ask ourselves when we see fixed rich O2 signals, which is what we have, is is the sensor lying or not? You can hear the vehicle, maybe you can. It's chugging very bad. Long-term fuel trim's negative 24%. Uh, there is no short-term value on this car. First thing we can look at as a clue to whether or not this O2's lying is the downstream right here. A downstream that's reporting 20 millivolts is a very, very lean condition where the upstream is rich. You know, we're sitting about 600 millivolts. You cannot have a rich condition upstream and a lean condition downstream. If it was an actual rich condition, the downstream would have also been reporting rich during this event. So that is one. I know it says we're still in closed loop. You can see this O2 is still not functioning like it should be. Can you drop that back into gear? I want to show one other measurement for identifying this, whether or not the sensor's lying. Kind of let this thing do its process again. Oh, we can show another one. Throw that back in park. As far as the upstream O2 goes, flutter the gas pedal. We want to try to drive this thing lean. Do it rapidly. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Notice the downstream, we can force the downstream to go rich and lean. The upstream, we're getting some changes. All right, leave it steady. We're getting some changes, but we're never really dropping below 600 millivolts. So that upstream, that's strike two. That upstream is dead. Uh, we could also make a large vacuum leak, although this being a MAP engine, that can be misleading. So I want to show one more, and that's when this thing goes very negative again, which we're seeing. It's going to start chugging. O2 is still rich. Anything above 450 millivolts is interpreted by the computer as rich. Computer's taking fuel away needlessly. This is not a rich condition. If it was really running that rich, again, I would also see it on this downstream. That cat would not be able to keep up. So we're going to compare tailpipe CO readings to this O2 as soon as my machine is ready here. All right, so having a little bit of difficulty with my gas analyzer here, I'm hoping to get this thing to chug again. And we'll find out here in a second. All right, so we're at negative. No, we're not. Put this in gear for me. Let's see if we can get this to go negative trims again. All right, there's negative 24% fuel trim. O2 is fixed rich. I'm at 670 millivolts. As you can see, with our CO numbers buried at zero, this engine in no way, shape, or form is running rich. This is a very valid test. Another thing too, looking at hydrocarbons very high, that is a lean misfire. Notice the O2, bottom right, is fixed rich. Can't have a fixed rich O2 signal in a 0% CO environment. One last thing guys to point out, open closed loop fuel control. This thing's in closed loop right now. Hear how it's running, just chugging. Shut the key off, Chris, start it back up. Hear how smooth it's running, initial startup, O2 related stuff. Don't use the O2 on initial startup. So that also gives you a good indication of an O2 problem. Initial startup, it runs good. Starts chugging after that when we go into closed loop. Starting to chug again. Again, what year was this Mitsu? I never caught that. So 97 Mitsubishi Eclipse is what we're working on. Everybody else want to be in this one? <laughs> <laughs> there it goes, Cap, he's running. <laughs> Bunch of students over here. Oh, Robert's rubbing his nipples, that's cool. <laughs> Brian's over there laughing. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm not editing this, Robert. You're gonna be in here rubbing your nipples, so thank you. <laughs> All right, so that was kind of fun showing everybody in the shop here, we, have, we do have good time here at Rosedale Tech. I wanted to mention one more thing guys and that is how many of us see a trouble code PO300 
and would think tune-up related, plugs, wires, whatever. No oxygen sensor fault codes in this vehicle at all. No fuel trim codes. A random misfire code is the only one. This is an O2 sensor problem on this vehicle. Can't go by trouble codes would be the lesson there. I also want to be clear that the test that I just showed was to prove that the O2 was lying. Once you prove that an oxygen sensor is lying, before you would ever replace an oxygen sensor, you should do some wiring checks. So let's make sure we got a good sensor ground, sensor signal, heater ground, heater power. Uh, the connector, I got Dave helping me holding the light here. That connector is right there, right by the radiator. And I'm just going to move that T-pin to all four. I'll get you focused on the scope. We'll talk about the four readings that we have. We're gonna do this with the engine running. All right, so first reading right here, guys. Sorry about the glare, I'm trying to do this quick. It's uh, 0 0.06, we see it at the bottom, 0 0.05. Um, car's running, that's my sensor ground, that's the gray wire. I'm good with my sensor ground. That's my signal wire. It's reading 1.5 volts. I don't like that. What's scan data showing? Scan data doesn't always report the actual voltage on the O2. It'll, it'll show like uh, a value as high as, as the program gives it. And we're at 1,300 millivolts, so that's pretty accurate. All right, so that's that's reporting accurately. That would be my signal. Obviously, with voltage that high, with a good sensor ground, it's really all we need to do. If my sensor ground was bad, that can drive our voltage high. That's not the case, right? We did a ground-to-ground -ground voltage drop test. That is a full TO2. We can grab the heater while we're here. Two more checks. That's my heater ground. 0 0.36, 0 0.37. Makes sense that it's a higher ground than the sensor because of more current flow. So that's a good heater ground. Dave, this is not a pulse width modulated heater like yours. It's steady voltage. That is a good power feed to this. O2 sensor, so that's your test. Again, sensor's lying. When you determine the sensor's lying before you put a sensor in it, do your wiring checks. It takes an extra five minutes to do it. 